Yeah, so um, thank you all for coming. Um, we are here for the second installment of a discussion with Betty Hunt. <laughs> Very informal, just an opportunity to ask the expert questions. And this is a great idea that Janet and a couple of the other guys, or maybe it was just you, had the brilliant idea to, um, to do this. Because I think it's just a great opportunity to chat and to have an opportunity to ask you questions and to okay. hear about your experience. Yesterday, I got off on a tangent, and after, after the thing was over, I thought, that was never great help to the staff, because back in my day, people were interested in the furniture. They wanted to know Sheraton versus Heppel White versus that kind of thing, and a lot of them were very knowledgeable. And you always knew, because they would make some comment about it, and you think, oh boy, okay, now I've got to be on my best behavior and know this stuff. But nowadays, it doesn't work that way. People don't really care, I don't think. So what do you do when you go through the house to, because what we have to do really is amuse. Mm -hmm. It's not have to be a little teach, entertaining. that's it, you have to yeah. be entertaining. And there are a lot of things in the house to point out that are fun, and that people, I'm surprised, as an artist by trade, I'm surprised at what people look at and don't see. Mm -hmm. For instance, that portrait in the back of the hall. There was a portrait going into the counting room, hanging outside as Robert Hooper, and he doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> so I love to point that out, because what you do is get in a little bit of the 18th century. You point out George Washington didn't have any teeth. And here's a guy who had the chutzpah to sit there for a portrait without any teeth. Uh, and that's kind of- Is it obvious he has no teeth? Hmm? Is it obvious he has no teeth? Oh, is it ever? Do you know what happens? Your face all yeah. 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 <laughs> cool off for there. And that's his, from the, it's a, yeah, yeah, right. picture. Yeah. yeah. It's no teeth. Okay. So, yeah. But rather than a photograph where you can't, you know, do too much about it, why wouldn't you just tell the painter to well, <laughs> paint it's The other thing that I point out, to, if you think about it, you look at a portrait of George Washington, you wouldn't know that he didn't have any teeth. Right. He, I don't know whether he posed with them in his mouth, but other, lots of people didn't have any teeth sure. in that, those days. Mm -hmm. By the time they were 30, their teeth were gone. Yeah. Part of it's too much sugar, but that happened to the royal family in England. Uh, they were all yeah. gumming it because well, they ate so much sugar. The combination of the availability of sugar and no, no, dentist, yes. no dentistry to speak of. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah. Um, that's kind of a fun thing. And um, yours truly has looked, speaking of looking at things, up until I think it was at this year that I discovered that <clears throat> clocks or watches with a Roman numeral dial, the four is four ones. It's not IV. Oh, yeah. So if you point that out on the, I do that usually on the clock in the counting room because it's uh -huh. such a gorgeous clock. It is and while I'm pointing out the days of the month and the phases of the moon and the sweep second hand, uh -huh. I point that out. And people, I never knew that. Well, then it gets people looking and remembering. The yeah. woman at the Historical Society in Marvel had told, and it gets the word out of we're mm -hmm. in business here. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. There's a piece of carpeting in that so-called guest bedroom upstairs uh -huh. with a back to Scott and Andre again that is, ooh, it's, I wouldn't want it on my floor. No, it's very busy. <laughs> yeah, and noisy yeah. is what it is. <laughs> but there was an article in the Globe this Sunday about the, what house? Uh, Otis House in Boston. Boston. Yeah, Harrison Otis House. Yeah. Richard Nylander and friends had done it over in the federal style correctly. It was wild. Because they, in the ceiling where they have that plaster thing around a chandelier, mm -hmm. it was painted shocking pink. Right. <laughs> now, you would think, really? Look at the rug on the floor. Yeah. It was, speaking of noisy, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. But we are used to looking at things from the idea of colonial revival. And they pointed out in the article that the Williamsburg colors were probably done when they were dirty. Mm. And so they're not really the color. Mm. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Because I mentioned to Lauren many years ago, I 
was doing a tour as a guide. And there were two men from the American wing at the Met. And we were in the counter, the big room, parlor, whatever you want to call it, with that gorgeous overmantle, and they were enthralled with that. And then they said to me, is there any indication, have you ever done any research to find out if the acanthus leaves around the, that's the top motif in that room, or acanthus leaves, were they ever done in gold leaf? Hmm. And I thought, oh. oh boy. At that time, I didn't realize, well, I did know it, but this, that's not important. That the room across the hall, the family parlor, we think was the same color as the one the, with, with the bad mm -hmm. raining on him. Okay. So I thought, gold leaf. I'm on Colonial Revival. They would have loved it. Mm -hmm. Because it's night at night when they're having a soiree, glitter. They're, the glitter would be a killer. Another thing to point out, the mirrors in the hall. You gotta be her height to look in them. They're not there for, look, for looking into. They're there to reflect light. Yeah. It's interesting to point out how dark things were yeah. at night particularly, or on a cloudy day. Mm -hmm. It was dark in there. And so anything you could have that would reflect light would be kind of interesting. That, as I say, that carpeting is good, isn't it? This is what he would have had on his floors, that kind of stuff. And apparently, Jeremiah had practically walled the wall according to his inventory. Huh. He had yards of axements to comedy. Mm -hmm. Amazing. The other thing that I do, and this is just my tour, but what I do is, when you're talking about the wallpaper, picture somebody had to do a scale drawing of the front hall of all of the rooms of wallpaper, but especially the scenic wallpaper, because the pieces of paper that it was done on are not on rolls. It's not that way. It's hunks. So you had to have a scale drawing of that hallway, take it over to England, and give it to the stainer, as they call it, on the wallpaper stainer, and they would draw on the paper what was going to come back and hang in Jeremiah's front hall. The other thing that's interesting, around the doorways, and the bottom hallway and the top hallway, is egg and dart. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of motif. Mm -hmm. They printed, Bach printed, the border egg and dart in England to go all the way around the doors on the top of the wainscot. And that's kind of interesting. So that border is separate from the main? Yes, yes. I it thought is. it was newer. I thought that border was new. Somehow. Parts of it have been replaced, but there are a lot of it that hasn't been replaced, and you can tell. Um, the other thing that's interesting, I was executive secretary during the time that most, I think all of the wallpaper conservation was done. This is over a period of years. I can remember the summer that they did the hall, what year was that? Was it 80s, somewhere in the 80s? 80s, early 90s, right? It was in the 90s, early 1990s. 90s. I don't remember the actual year, <clears throat> but it was interesting because the whole hallway, you remember it, Connie? I do, I do. And Hazel Oliver, I think, was the one who started the campaign to get the paper cleaned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the House Committee. Oh, yeah, geez, I that hallway was full of staging because you, yeah. you, know, you can't get up on a ladder on that staircase, mm -hmm. so they had staging everywhere. We were ducking under the staging to do tours. <laughs> the thing that's interesting is in the room that we think of as Mr. Lee's bedchamber, the one that has the Neptune on the window, between the front windows. If you look on the wall toward the brick building outside, his, there's the egg and dark border. But on the other wall, no, it's a uh, trefoil, quatrefoil border. Yeah. Well, when the wallpaper was taken off, the Northeast Document Conservation Center found writing on the plaster behind Neptune. 
and there's dates. It should be in the right in the report. Yeah. Okay. So you can tell. And I just suspect, but I don't know. And I never cleared talked to T.K. McClintock, who was in charge of the thing. Was that done at that time? One assumes when they took the wallpaper off and saw the date and the signature of the man who had taken it off. He obviously didn't do part of the room, but when he took it off, he wrecked the border, and so they put up something else. And so that's kind of fun to point out. Um, I personally like that wallpaper in that room better than the bellicose stuff with the drums and the swords and the cannons and the rest of it on the outside. Because there's one panel, and I don't know if that's of great interest to you, but there's one panel where there's a vessel that's healed over yes. on its side yeah. and there's like smoke coming out of it. And what they're probably doing is burning off the stuff on the bottom of the ship because they had no dry docks. And if the oh. thing got um, like barnacles and seaweed, oh. how did you get? But that's one thing to point out. Oh. See, I'm not talking furniture. Mm -hmm. I will point to the bellflower inlay on the two card tables in that room. And I do talk about other things up there, but um, I don't get into it. Do open the closet door in that room <laughs> because there is a series of wooden hooks on the wall and the house is post and beam. And there's got to be a post behind a thing in the corner that he has, somebody, had, it was Jeremiah I know, put a cap, what they call a cap, they put on a lovely smooth thing with beading on it in a closet. Yeah. I mean, who would care? Right. But he would care. Well, that's almost the same thing as the cellar with that herringbone brick and the archways. Yeah, yeah. Who would care? Yeah. But it's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, the cellar, of course, we can't get into it, but, yeah, but um, such a the, where the doors were down there, because you can see there are lintels on the side, and the coal bin, which I love, I love the, coal. the coal bin is still that coal in it from the 19th mm -hmm. century. Yep. I know really want you. And scuttles. Yes, because they had, when Hannah Tut was working here during the winter, there were stoves in that in a stove in the great room mm -hmm. and so she sat in there to do her work and there were there's still coal in the cellar but I started to say part of the coal bin is one of the doors that they took off you can see uh, the hinges they just laid it right there on the hinges later. on it have you ever been down the cellar yeah so that's kind of fun um I always point out as I mentioned yesterday that awful staircase that uh, Lauren and I think, went from the third floor down to the first floor, from the nursery, so-called. I always pointed out from the top so see pe people could see how dark it is. And then when you go down to this housekeeper's room, the room beneath, to point out the risers are so high and the treads are so narrow, and the with people who were running up and down, there's a word, I probably don't run, there's no railing, there's no light, and you're carrying, as I mentioned, light night soils <laughs> down those stairs very carefully. You know. So that's kind of fun to point out. Um, the museum room can be tough because it's got one of the things that we're up to, along with desks. <laughs> A lot of desks. Do we have sea chests or do we have sea chests? But there are a number of things in that. Of course, the bicycle, everybody sees that when they go yeah. in. What's the and point of that bicycle in there, though? Well, one of the things to point out about it is it was a man's vehicle, naturally. But the thing is, they rode it on streets that were not paved, yeah. that were rutted, that had puddles and animal droppings. <laughs> And can you imagine riding one of those damn things? I've seen it done. I mean, not in real life, but on film. Right. And I thought, boy, if you ever went over on that thing, you're, every bone is yeah. broken, but there you go. If you ever watch American Pickers, yes. um, the guy, the, the, young, the taller, thinner guy, he loves those bicycles. And I've seen him on a couple of occasions he was sort of take a running start <laughs> and get up there, and he loves it. but. It just makes me dizzy to look at. Look at the seat sometimes. Yeah. 
How did we get that bicycle? I don't have any idea. I have How no old idea. would that be? Do you think? Yeah, Somebody did yeah. it over. If you notice the pedals, yeah, on it is it, rather because new they made it to it to oh, be able to be ridden. But the tire and the front has separated the hard rubber tire. Yeah. But uh, this is probably something that I can look it up. My um, mentor over here would not like. <laughs> but I point out the seat, and I said. When you get up on that thing, you do it very carefully, otherwise you sing soprano and it's yeah. quiet from then on. <laughs> the springs are terrible on it. The other thing that I like to point out are the pieces of 17th century oak joining. Those are very important. Our meeting house, first meeting house, was built in 1638 and it was on Burial Hill. The second was built in 1695 on Franklin Street. And some of those pews were brought there. But then when that church was torn down to build what they call the Stone Church on Washington Street, the paneling disappeared, dissipated, disappeared. And, but we've got several pieces of it, and it's very, very important. It's rare, be very rare. And so that's important to point out. The other thing I always do is that barrel that has the charts in it. Yes. That's the GPS systems of the period, <laughs> and people laugh. But you see, they get the idea of what it was. I don't go into any great thing about the shoes. I do say that George Washington couldn't tell his left shoe from his right shoe because there weren't any differences. And I said, in a way, it kind of worked out because you'd swap feet. If the outside of the shoe wore down, you'd put it on the other foot. Um, I do point out in that room the Dixon Ticonderoga pencils. Yeah, what is the what's the connection? What's the connection? Was it Dixon? Was it a model header? Yeah, he was born and brought up on Darling Street, and he, which is right around the, the wooden wrap pencil. Yeah, he's Eberhard Faber did them in Europe. Oh, okay. But he with the American graphite pencil. Mm -hmm. I noticed you put my container in the. I did. There's a little container in there of graphite that I gave Lauren for the collection. It was in my cellar, and I don't remember if use this thing, but it's wonderful for locks. You know that. It's wonderful for locks, L O C K X. Yeah. It, to lubricate a lock works like a charm. So zippers? Yeah, zippers, whatever. So, but what happened was, just as a background, don't get into this because it's not that important, but a lotus of Graphite came in from Ceylon on a ship in the harbor. He was fascinated with it. What is this stuff? And he began experimenting. One of the things that he did, and I can remember my mother had it because we had a black iron stove in the kitchen when I was a very little girl, and mum used to polish it with graphite, black iron stove polish. It was beautiful when it was done. It looked great. But he was fascinated with it, and he found out a lot of interesting things, one of which I do mention if people are, if you get the mood that they're, they are interested. He developed, using graphite, the making, okay, I can't remember the word now. The things that you melt metal in. Crucibles. Crucibles, thank you, darling. Crucibles. It was awfully hard to keep silver, gold, for instance, at the same temperature, correct temperature, for working. But you couldn't do it. It would go up and down and cool off of it. But he developed a method of making crucibles with, a, with graphite in them. And they used it when they were making an atomic um, and thing. When Chernobyl went, yeah. it was because the graphite finally caught fire. It takes forever for it to burn. Forever. Is it a natural substance, graphite? Hmm? Is it a natural substance? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, graphite is a natural, natural substance, and it comes from Ceylon primarily, mm -hmm. or it did on his day. But to think that in this day and age of atomic energy and re reactors, the crucibles would have been given up. And was this Mr. Dixon who used the graphite? Hmm? Was it Mr. Dixon that you were speaking of that it was that Well, Dixon that? was the one who developed a lot. He had patents like crazy. Sometimes you forget to get patents. He did things like 
think about it. Nowadays, we don't think about it. But water, solid, water would get into shoes. You'd go to walk around. You take them off, and your feet would be bright red because the, the, the dye was a set of cells, you know, it would melt. So he did that. Also, he developed dyes or inks for printing calico. I'm going to digress again. My mother had a friend who was a school teacher in Marblehead, and she didn't have no teeth. She didn't have any. And I said to her one time, Mrs. Bazanson, she lost her teeth when she was a little girl, scarlet fever or something. I said, is there anything you can't eat? And she said, yes, I can't eat an apple unless it's cut up. She couldn't bite into it. And she can't eat nuts. They go poom, off, <laughs> off her gums. But anyway, she used to have these wonderful outfits that she had. She was an old lady, one marvelous. She wore a corset. And when she stood up, you'd never know she had it on. But when she sat down, all of a sudden she had a shelf. <laughs> and of course, I fascinated me as a little kid. And my mom said, don't. <laughs> but I, eventually, when I got a little older, I asked her. She was wonderful about it. But what I started to say is, she would turn her dresses. What the hell was she saying? The fabric was so beautiful, and it was so well done, that when it got kind of ratty looking on the outside, they would turn the dress inside, fix the seams and everything, and she had a couple of dresses that she had, quote, turned. What? The development of that great ink that he did for printing calico, was one of the one of the things he wound up having a very and I think it's still in business the Dixon Chemical Company in New Jersey, but he was quite a guy. So Dixon Ticonderoga started in Marble. And there's a little, um, I think it's a uh, sure not in Natchez, probably I don't know what it is, but it's a in the, the little picture. I wish it were closer to the front, but anyway, of him, yeah. Uh, those are the things that I usually talk about. Once in a while, I will mention those boots that are made for, that a fisherman would wear. They're by the cobbler's bench mm -hmm. in the room. And I say, how, how would you like to be fully clad on the Grand Banks, wearing those boots, and all of a sudden, over the board you go? Mm -hmm. Au revoir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Terrible. What were, they, were they leather? Oh, yeah. yeah. They are very heavy. They've got wire, uh, fishing line on them, so you can't do too much with them, but you can sort of lift them up. Also on that cobbler's bench is a lap stone. Yeah. It's a round rock. Mm -hmm. And what they used to do was put it between their legs, and they would take sole leather, which was soaking, usually, in a bucket of water. And there is a little uh, hammer with a great big peen on it. The peen is huge. It's not like a regular wood hammer. And, and they would sit and they would bang, 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 bang to squish the, le the layers of leather down so that the sole would let wear longer. And, and it said it somewhere, was it in Fry's book? Somewhere. It talks about how strong and and callous the inside of the guy's legs where you could hit him with a two by four and they wouldn't feel it. Yeah. Oh. The rock was, was normal, you get it from a, a little beach, mm -hmm. but it was rounded so they could hold it between their legs. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Um, How about the, the Marblehead pottery in that room? I don't usually get into that too much. It's in a tough place to see. It is, yeah. I'm not no, <laughs> but those damn sea chests are right there, right there with you. Um, have, have you looked up Marblehead pottery on eBay? Yeah, they have it on antiques roadshow. Oh sometimes. yeah, and it's, really it's very interesting. interesting. Yes, yeah. it really is. It's a great story because the big, how it started I like is it. interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that it was a kind of therapy right. for people with nervous disorders. Mm -hmm. To sit there and make pots. When would that have been, Betty? What years are we talking? It started in the 19th century and it finally gave out in the 1930s. And on Front Street, hint, 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 I point out where there was a shop where it was sold. 
And on Goodwin's Court is where the um, pottery was. It was where it was oh, fired. Uh -huh. yeah. It eventually became a commercial thing. Um, there was a, the, the designer, my mind is not working today, the heat's getting to me. <clears throat> there was a fellow who did the designs of the pottery. And that thing, that big thing that's standing on the <clears throat> side with the loops of, yeah, that is a is water that? lily bowl. Water lily. You would put water lilies in it, okay? And it was one of his experimental pieces. It never went into production. But they did tiles, bookends, um, vases, vases, whatever. <laughs> we have vases, but we also have lamp bases. And they look like a vase, but uh -huh. it's really a lamp base. Uh -huh. What the heck was his name? What was his name, Warren? They, the I know. Hmm? The doctor? He wasn't the designer, though. Oh, he was the staff. Yeah. They were the designer of it. I've forgotten who his name is, but one day I got a phone call, and this is so-and-so. No, oh, bags. Bags? Bags. bags. Walter Bags? Something like Arthur Bags. Arthur Bags. Bags. This is Arthur Bags. I said, not the Arthur Bags! <laughs> Well, it was his son, oh. and he, that's how I come. I know that that piece was made as experimental. It didn't go out of production. There's one other experimental piece in there too, but he was very interested, and I opened the case and let him take out the pieces to look at them. I'll tell you where there's a great collection of it, and that is in Abbott Hall. Yeah. Yeah. A terrific um, collection of it in Abbott Hall. It gives you an idea of how much more was made. One of the things that he did, this is a digress again, but it's good for you to know. When Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered, they sent over one of the little perfume bottles to the Metropolitan Museum. Or they gave it to them, or we bought it, or whatever. And so they gave it to the pottery in Marble Head, and they made a cast of it. And they used to turn out perfume bottles in the form of an Egyptian sarcophagus oh, he died. Oh, cool. And I don't know whether there's one in Abbott Hall or not, but that was part of the Marblehead pottery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's third floor. Um, I have one question about the museum room. Yeah. The town crier spell. Do we know when that dates from? No, I have no idea. There's a picture. Um, there's a photograph of the last town crier whose name is escaping me. Yeah. Who has the spell. Now whether is that the bell? It's the, it looks just like it. I think it is that bell, but how far back that bell yeah. really goes. Yeah. When did the town crier stop crying? <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, I don't know when that I'd have to be. go back and look it up here. I, I mean, did they have the town crier as well as newspapers? I would suspect what did the town crier in was a newspaper. The newspaper. They did have newspapers. The Marblehead Mercury was one of the very early ones, but they went in and out of business. And I, I, George Derringer, remember, was reenacted the town crier during the bicentennial or tercentenary or whatever, was there he's down on the tower. Uh, uh, there are a lot of interesting things in that museum. But I do say that do the, the um, oak joining, that's very important. I don't do anything about the fire stuff. That, there are a few Indian artifacts, and for little kids, they might be interested in the arrowheads and that sort of stuff. But one of these years, we're going to dig out the baby stays. Baby Working stays. on it, we're inventorying the textile room. <laughs> and um, we cool. have a set, it's a corset for baby. oh, babies. Oh, babies. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, they, they felt that it helped the child be kept oh, in good postures. <laughs> And Gee, so whiz. it's a teeny weeny little thing, and it's fascinating to hear because we have lots of things in the collection that are not shown. Mm -hmm. sure. But let's talk about what we do have shown. Um, we talked about the sitz bath the other day, which is not 18th century, but the shower in that. And I point out, yeah. what the heck would you have to do to get into and out of that damn thing? That sits bath. Yeah, yeah. At my age, I couldn't do it. No, my knees would say. I couldn't do it. <laughs> if somebody hauled me out of it, I could do it. But then, one of the things you can do 
if you're stuck for something at a time. How the heck did they heat enough water and get it from the exactly. fireplace to here yeah. to take a bath? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Do I remember Dolly were... Parton talking about when her sisters and brothers and all were taking a bath, they, they used the same water? Yeah. But they bathed in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. By the fire. Oh, yeah, by the fire. Yeah. They weren't yeah. hooking it yeah. up to the third floor. Yeah. So why is the sits bath on the third floor? Because it's too late for the oh, kitchen. Okay. It's way too late. The third floor is 19th century for the most part. Yeah. And there's, the problem is also there's too much in the yeah. collection. And exactly. I think you can't show why. everything. Right. Um, Lauren's doing a great job of bringing out stuff and tucking other stuff okay. away which makes it so much easier, it really does. She's now, as you know, working on textiles. There are boxes and boxes and boxes of textiles. <laughs> and are I, they 18th century? Well, some of them are not. I'm going to be a pain in the ass about this, but the, one of the, one of the woman who was here before used to take things that, why are you taking this? Yes, it was on a Marblehead body, but it was on a Marblehead body in the 1940s. Uh -huh. Why are you taking it? Because we don't have that much storage space. Right. It's fine if you've got that beautiful dress that's downstairs in right. the front. Right. Yeah, that we want. And by the way, it's a great joy and fear to sew a label. Most of the labels that are sung, what they do when they're cataloged, they're given a number, and they write this on a piece of cotton tape. And then they say, Betty, because <laughs> I could do it, I'd sit with my little needle and sew it on so that it... Because uh. one of the things that we've done over the years, again, this is not going to help you a lot, but one of the things that's happened over the years is a lot of the numbers have got, not come off or been lost. They did a, put, put it on a little... The, ta the tags. Yeah. The like a tag sand, or, or a glued sticker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gone. Yeah. yeah. And then when it falls on the floor, you think, what did it belong to? Yeah. yeah. You don't know. Okay, so now we're on the third floor. The trundle bed is interesting, um, but it's not for children. It's for someone who's asleep, who, if the person in the bed were ailing or very elderly, that person. A servant would sleep in the room, and then they shove the bit, the thing underneath. Um, one of the members of the house committee, this was the group of ladies that made the house beautiful, went in when she saw the the work done on the that yellow gingham chintz gingham coverings in that room. It doesn't match. I said, Dorothy. They didn't match in the old days. The fabric was too costly. Yeah. So they just put together what That's exactly really they bad. wanted to do. Another thing we don't have showing anymore because it's our samplers. Right, they're all boxed. And we have a lot of very good samplers. But again, that's not something that the average person is interested in. Mm -hmm. They really are. Mm -hmm. Because I can remember showing, and I say, look at this. This is something that a child did, age so-and-so. And they, oh. They didn't think why or anything, and I didn't get into it. Okay, let me see. We've done that room. Ooh, one of the things I like to do, at the back of the third floor hallway, look out the window. Look how high we are. I think, That's interesting. And I always point out the two windows slash doors that lead down to the attic. From the third floor hallway, there's one at one end of the hall and one at the other end. It was for two purposes, to gain access of large stuff up there, to put it up. And because the stairs going up to the attic are butt wide, you know, you can't carry anything up there. And the other, the other thing is <laughs> ventilation. If they, if, back in my day, you could or open some of the windows on the third floor. And if the leaves were there in the summertime, why they would be there, I don't know, because the smell of the time would drive you away. <laughs> but if you raise the windows in the cupola, the heat would go out. Mm -hmm. It would be nice. 
Can and you, is that the purpose for those two window openings? That's sort of, what she's referring to, yeah. yeah. That yeah. sort of gives the, the heat a little bit further to go rather than yeah. hanging yeah. on the third yeah. floor. But it, they, they had multi-purpose for that purpose and also for getting stuff into the attic mm -hmm. for storage. It gives you light, too. Hmm? It gives you True. some light in the attic. Too. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right, uh -huh. yeah. Can I just go backwards a little bit? The yeah. oak joinery that you said is so important. I could say, well, there it is, but what do I say about it? What was that again? The oak joinery that you were saying in the museum room? The church doors. The, well, the, the fact that it is so rare. Okay. In this country, you don't find much of anything like that. There was a show that some of those pieces okay. went to. Yeah, New England the, Begins at the MFA in the 70s. Yeah. It was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. There was a show, and they came and asked us, could they take some of that too? Because it's so few pieces around. Okay. Yeah, and, and it it's from New England Begins, the 17th century. And that's, those are yeah. 17th century old <clears throat> early. Okay, I have to look at yes. I can talk a little bit about them if you want. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, He's a, a furniture person. <clears throat> in those. Uh, in those days, they wouldn't. It was a lot of work to saw the wood. So what they would do, with, in particular with oak, is they would find straight grain pieces and they would split it. And they use a tool called a fro, which looks kind of like a hatchet, but the sharp end is mm -hmm. pointing down in the handle, and you and you pound it down, and you can use it to split off straight grain pieces of wood. And then you can just clean it up a little with planes, and then use planes to put, you know, molding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, edges on it and that sort of thing. So that's how they would make the pieces rather than, you know, sawing boards lengthwise. Mm -hmm. they, they just split them out with a furrow. So it's called riven, and it's riven oak. And then it's done put together with mortise and tenons. Mm -hmm. You know, the tenon, one board has a, has a tab, mm -hmm. you know, that they cut, and another one has a slot. And then they have a hole that goes through. But they would make the hole a little bit offset so that when you put a pin in there, it pulls the joint tight. And what those, uh, those panels have, if you look really closely, and it's probably not something you want to show people, but sometime in curiosity, you might want to look yourself, the, the pins, you know, the wooden pegs that are put in there to pull that tight, those actually are, are split, and they have a wedge driven into them. Huh. You can see a, a little line in them where the grain runs differently. And so that, so that locks the pin in there really tight. Huh. And that's why now 350 years later, those mm -hmm. things are still uh, sound. Yeah. And they come from the first meeting houses, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, 1638. Yep. Wow. Um, wow. It's amazing that, this, that any of it still exists. And we're, I, I, I think we're very fortunate to have it. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not something that oh wow it's not that kind of thing but it's important <clears throat> because of its age <clears throat> yeah. and if you say to people it's this date from 1638 they're like, wow, oh pretty good I don't spend hours on it but I do point yeah. it out yeah. and the, as I said the GPS systems that's the shown <laughs> and if I'm dying to talk about something there is a captain's medicine chest up there, it's everything else, you know. But it's, in the museum room? Yeah, in the yeah. museum room. It's down one step, down one the bottom shelf in one of the cabinets. Mm -hmm. And the captain would have had mm, drugs and things in it, you know, nostrums and whatever. And there was some book I was reading about the fellow, the cat, the, the came up to the captain and said, oh, I've got such a terrible headache. <laughs> so he said, well, go down to the cabin and take two, to take, uh, two, two sixes. So, something, so, I, I, I'm sorry, I said, he could take a number 12. Mm -hmm. So the guy comes back up. He said, oh, uh, he, you got the 12? He said, there wasn't anything in the bottle of 12, so I took two sixes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you know, it's just all herbs and whatever, and alcohol, yeah. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be before the nursery gets to anything. I don't usually get into many of those portraits in there, but they are of dead children. Yeah. And the children were dead when they were port the portraits were done. Um, that spooks some people. Yeah, yeah. they were dead. I always thought they, the mothers thought they might be dying. 
But you're saying they actually were dead. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. The way I tell it, and I don't tell me if this is true, that you know, since obviously the children would die at home. Yeah. That like once the doctor left and pronounced them dead, if you had the means, you would then call in the yeah. portrait artist. Yeah. Is that basically how it would? Yeah. As far as I know, yeah, because otherwise, otherwise the body types are spoiled, right? Well, well, then, and unless not. you're going to freeze them. Right. But they're supposedly, I was told they were of dead children. I believe so. The symbolism of the roses and yeah. the pointing and down. The pointing yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, a, there's one of a little boy, and he's pointing. That's oh, by an artist. Oh, it's a, yeah, scope. What's what the name? Scotty, Scotty. 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 Yeah. The one in the, it's in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. It's an artist of some uh, renown. He and drowned. he's pointing to yes. where he died. Where he drowned. Yeah. He drowned. Yeah. 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 He's a 14-year-old kid in a nice-looking outfit. And I love if you again if you can't think of anything to say in there, the little boy on the hobby horse, mm -hmm. yeah, with the skirt and the long right, hair, looks like a girl. <clears throat> I always say little girls never straddled a horse, uh -huh. never. That's a little boy. That's another one of the things that belongs to town, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, Devereux. He's a Devereux. Yeah, right. Abbott Devereux. Abbott Devereux. Yeah. Okay, so that's that, pretty much. Um, then you come back downstairs and you get to the housekeeper's room. And that's where I point out the bottom of that staircase. Lauren and I, and Stanley's, I'm not sure that he's still on this one, but we have pretty sure that that damn staircase went all the way from the third down to the first, right. to the kitchen. That would make sense. Okay. We have no way of knowing for sure, but maybe if some lovely person leaves us a fortune of money, we'll have a, 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 somebody come in and yeah. look at it, sure. you know, and architecture, whatever. Okay, so then you've got the kitchen. Before we do that, I don't have too much to say in the nanny's room. Is there anything else to talk? I usually talk about the brick kitchen because you yeah, can see it well. From see, that's there. a good place to do yeah, it. So that's a place where I do yeah, that. And I do it. talk about the staircase yeah, and the possibility about of the other staircase. I can't think of anything else to really say in there. Well, if you want to point out anything, that's a very plain room. Mm -hmm. right? There's no fancy molding. There is molding around, but it's not worked at all, hardly. Um, it's one. The, it's not a double wall, like some of the other rooms right. have double walls. This does not have a double wall. Mr. Lee's bedroom, for instance, there's a double wall. The, okay. the, 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 the shutters? The thickness of the window seat. The window seat yeah. and the shutters. Yeah. And yeah. That's right. Exactly. And the pockets. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. shutters. Okay. I never picked up yeah. on that. Yeah. That's, that's a thing that you can do in there. Um, one of the things that you can bring it up. The Marquis de Lafayette came to this house on two occasions. Mm -hmm. The last time was 1848? Uh, 24. 1824. 1824. Right. And he was tired. He was an old man at that mm -hmm. time. It's amazing to think that he was 19 on the, on the right. Revolutionary War when he mm -hmm. came over. But when he came back, he came to the house. And of course, at that time, it was owned by the bank. Mm -hmm. So the cashier's wife said, well, go upstairs and rest in my bed. And the children, a couple of kids, who is, you know, who, wow, is that, who? and they went Brr, the stairs to see him. Which, but isn't that fun to think that the Marquis de Lafayette was resting in that room in 1824. Okay. Yeah. No, that's kind of fun. Um, beyond that, in that room, and showing the, the brick kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's important. Then we go down to uh, the kitchen that we have. Um, that fireplace has been worked over, I don't know how many dozen times. It has because the early pictures of the removal actually show the oven differently. Yeah. Uh, they, they made the oven into a square. Yeah. yeah. Do you think they, it was arched maybe? In it was in the going? pictures when they first took the, um, the plaster and stuff away from it. Yeah. It was, but whether then they revert it's a lot. Who knows what they were thinking yeah. when they did it. Um, the, the thing is, sometimes, what, why bother? We could say, but just make a statement if you want to. The fireplace has been worked over. However, and then go on, 
one of the things that people don't realize a lot of times on cooking in a fireplace like that, they didn't have a roaring five logs going tickety boom. They had small fires across the house, mm -hmm. and they went Different from one fire to another the way we go on a burners on a stove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they did stuff on a, on the crane with the pots and pans, and of course they ate an awful lot of. They do a soup, and they just keep adding into that same base. Yeah. Uh, so the food that they had was pretty limited and not that much fun, you know, but, uh, but that's kind of interesting. There is a, an interesting iron, and it looks like a hot dog. Yeah, the gophering iron? It's, it, yeah, it's four ruffles. Yeah. It's a gophering iron, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, the foot stove, you could, oh, and there's one other thing that I love on that. Hanging on the fireplace below the mantel, there's a little thing, wood, with a metal thing at the bottom. And I take it down just so I can explain, because you can't tell when it's hanging up there what it is. But I take it down, and I show, it's got a little thing that looks like a coal hod or something on the bottom, it's small, with some very nice perforations and flower form at the top. And I said, this was very important because it took a lot of work to get a fire going. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of work. So if the fire went out, you would run next door to your neighbor and you'd say, could I have some of your embers? Yeah. And you'd scoop them up in this thing and you'd run home and it was straw. They didn't burn paper. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, no. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. Yeah. Maybe old rags, but, but straw and wood chips and that thing. Uh -huh. But see, then, then they didn't have to do with the tinder and the flint and the who mm -hmm. and the. It was much easier. And, and that's where, where is that hanging? If you face the fireplace, it's hanging on the left hand side. Uh -huh. now, Lauren would like to go have me go through and that. show, through point that. out some of the things that I mm -hmm. talk about, yeah. which I find mm -hmm. fun. Um, so that's interesting in the kitchen. I always, now and I love that sugar thing you do, mm -hmm. because there's a pair of sugar tong, cutters mm -hmm. on the kitchen table. Sugar came in things about so high, like cones, mm -hmm. and it was hard as a rock. So you went boom and cut off a piece. And in that firkin that's on the table, there are little pieces of what do you call it? It's plastic stuff. It's styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. But it shows you about the size of the stuff you get. Uh -huh. Now, if you wanted it to be, not that they measured much, but if you wanted it in a granulated form, that's why the mortar and pestle is there. So that you pound this sugar and get it to the, that form, which is good. Um, is the pewter on the table? The pewter is, is newer. Yeah, it's, it's new. Nice. But one of the things you can mention about pewter. Oh, the pewter. Sorry, I'm pewter. thinking of the teapot. No, the pewter. Is the old. pewter. Poisonous. Mm -hmm. It's full of lead. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know. The captain's, there's a beautiful captain's liquor mm -hmm. thing yeah. in one of the rooms. Yeah. And you wonder how much was in that, that was lead in that crystal. Yeah. True. You don't know. Right. But they didn't know the difference. So if they were getting sick, they didn't know why. Yeah, for instance, the putting the powder that women put on, yeah. full of lead. Yeah. Full of lead. They didn't know. Okay, so the kitchen. Um, I don't go into the Nan King and the town canton. The only thing I do point out is there are a couple of plates there that when I was a little kid, baby's dishes were like this. They were double, and you put hot water in, mm -hmm. and you can, you can see you can point that out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, odds and ends of stuff, I don't spend a mile in the kitchen. I do the sugar, because that's, that's visible, and you can see it. Do now, you, do you do Lafayette's platter? Hmm? Lafayette's platter? Isn't that, didn't we get, this was something mm -hmm. maybe on? Yeah, the, the, the big the, the um, willowware, willowware the platter of Lafayette's house in England. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you, yeah, that's true. You can do that. Yeah, yeah. especially that if you mention Lafayette and sleeping up in the bedroom. It's just yeah. a, a, 
It's a Staffordshire flag in yeah. that closet oh, yeah. that has Lafayette right. House in, in France. Oh, I yeah. thought he gave that as a gift to the bank. No. I, I, yes, I think so. You did? Oh, I don't know. I think I've read that someplace. I don't know that it's true. Probably from way back. Well, I mean, that was very. His I doubt that he would do that. A lot because of souvenirs. I, I'll tell you. I I'll tell you why I think this yeah. is doubtful. Yeah. Because there were. How can I say this? There are a couple of pear trees in Rattlehead that he was supposed to have brought on his second trip, and I thought. Pear trees yeah. on a boat? Yeah. yeah. Platter on a boat? Yeah. You know, you, you travel light. Mm -hmm. you, maybe, I don't know. I mean, there were a lot of souvenirs produced from his visit around his visit. Yeah. I would, oh. be, I would think there would be say, more yeah. of that. I would think that would be it. I don't think he'd bring it. I don't think, yeah. Because I'm not so sure that Staffordshire was doing things like that in 1824. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I'd have to I don't know. <coughs> but anyway, I don't get into that one. The transfer. Um, if I, I, so there's nothing much else in the kitchen. People. Yeah. Is that, that thing that's with the moving the fire. That yeah. that's that gets grabs people's attention. Yeah. Has now the we, bucket been repaired yet, Lauren? It has the rope. That you can say this is what a gallon of water felt. Oh, like. that's good. Oh. Because I always know people when they feel that, actually, yeah, it really right. gives them a, a. It's been retired. But I remember it, it, it is so you okay because I haven't I haven't been using that. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, it's um, been retired because people really do go. Oh wow, they, yeah, you know, they can feel. That's a goodie. That's a goodie. Yeah, yeah. Um, the irons also yeah. are good, right. and when you stop to think of having to put them on the fire and then picking them up and bringing them over, and there is one iron on the hearth that has a little trap door in the back of it right. that has he, the, he the thing. But the, remember, you're almost to the end of the tour, okay? <laughs> Let's not get into too much thrill, um, because the Bowback Windsors are very important. <laughs> but nobody gives a damn about them now. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now we go and we look at the guy with no proof, <laughs> and then we go into the counting room. And the fireboard in there is beautiful. There's one on the third floor, and I don't even look at it because it's, I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. No. But the one in the counting room is marvelous because it shows the neck without a tree or a bush and the causeway going over, and it shows Nicholas Bartlett's vessels in the harbor with his house flag. Why the fireboard? Because for some reason in the 18th century, people didn't like looking at empty fireplaces. It doesn't bother me. Mine's empty. <laughs> no, I don't care. I thought it had a practical purpose so that Draft birds and yeah. bats can't get in the house. Birds and bats can get in anyway. Yeah. I'm sure it. that's true. It doesn't, it doesn't fit in the fireplace. Right. It, well, they used to fit like over the andirons. Oftentimes they'd have cut throughs. Yeah. So sometimes it could, but you still could get stuff yeah. in, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Um, <laughs> not too long ago, several years ago, I opened the damper in my fireplace and a pigeon flew up. Oh, yeah, we've had that <laughs> So I'm chasing the pigeon around the living room. <laughs> I got him, threw him out the front door. Okay, so um, that's interesting. Uh, of course, the safe. Yeah. I wish that that damn yeah, I want to move that here. I would like to have that moved. I, I, yeah, the safe because is more interesting. Over, over with. Oh, oh. You can store that in my house. If you okay, enjoy. thank you. Okay. You're so generous. <laughs> okay, one of the things I didn't mention on the third floor, and I do it because I'm a header, but that car cartoon, it's a drawing by Glover Broughton oh, like of uh, Dartmoor Prison. Yeah. And there's his portrait. Mm -hmm. And in the county room, there he is in profile, a cute little kid, 21 <coughs> years old or so, and over his head is a rule, R-O-U-X, don't bother with that, but it's a very important family in Marseille that painted vessels, mm -hmm. and they're very important to people who, uh, and there he is with Nancy, his, the, his vessel, the Nancy, leaving Marseille from Marblehead, and it says it right there. now. I point out that I wouldn't go across Red's Pond <laughs> with a 21-year-old and get charge of a ship. The guy next to him, I might change my mind. 
<laughs> but there would be a place to put that damn card table between yes. those two chairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we go over and we look, and there is the, the safe, which is very interesting. I and think. that is from Jeremiah's time. Yes. Because I've heard people say, no, it's from the bank. No, it's no. from Jeremiah's time. No, I thought when they put a thing in there, when they had a great big vault next door. Yeah. And how do you install it into the chimney after the chimney is yeah. built? That would be hard. Yeah, that would be turned. So so that is the man, it went there after the chimney was built? Mm. The ironwork, from what somebody who kind of knows something about iron told me, it does look early. Like, yeah. like it could be original. And Stanley Goodwin, our friend, found out that the, that thing that's in there, the floor on the safe, it's not original. Yeah, it's just a piece of It goes all the way down to the cellar. Yeah. It goes down pretty low. I don't know yeah. if it's all the way down. It goes I guess way it down. Go in the cellar. So that. Is, you know. okay. Yeah, that's just a piece of plywood somebody painted. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there are pictures when the bank had it that they, they had something there because they had little upright file folder holders in it when it was a yeah. bank. When I started working in here as executive secretary, and I could get my nose into things that as a guide you can't do, there were records in that thing that belonged to the Unitarian Church. Mm -hmm which was the second congregational church dating from 1714. And they were having had a schism way back when, and they didn't want anything to happen to the records. So they asked the historical society, could we keep them in the safe in Mr. Lee's office? And we said, they said yes, and that's where they were. Now they've gone back to the church, but that's what was in there when I started working here. The other thing, of course, the clock. I, I mentioned about the, the dial. I also like to point out <laughs> the fellow with that wonderful hairdo and the eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> he was a veteran. Oh, he was killed in the War of 1812. He's buried in Valparaiso. He was killed in a battle off Valparaiso in Chile, and that's where he's buried. As a result of his heroism, he was given, the family was given silver coins, and in that silver display is that little helmet picture which was made for his wife, his widow. So I kind of think that's nice. He was a descendant of General Glover, too, or related to General Glover. Now, when I was working here, and Connie will return to this, people used to go, women especially, <gasps> the ceramics. They would go ape. <laughs> Hours. We had to boot them out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they would salivate all over everything. <laughs> now, people go, and I go, because I didn't ever like it in the first place. <laughs> but in those days, the women loved it. Oh, Times yeah. change. How about the big bowl? Is there any story to be told about that? It's French, it's not Chinese, mm -hmm. which is kind of fun. If you look in that closet, one side of it is Chinese, and there is a pillow, a ceramic pillow, yes. down on the floor. Uh -huh. Yeah. The other side is English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liverpool Joe. And was that just a punch bowl? Is that what that was used for? As far as I know. I would suspect so. Old People old did old a lot of yeah. libation. Yeah. Yeah. The punch. 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 yeah. If you're having a big pot potty, as we used to say, P O T T Y, it would be <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Can we open for questions? Yes, by all means, ask. Because I now I know it. Yeah. When was Lafayette's first visit? Do you know? 1789? 1789. Sherry's nodding her head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Or was that? Yeah. It was Washington. Was that Washington? No, 1789. I think so. Yeah, 1789. Yeah. All right, let's go with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so was he not here then during the revolution? He was with Washington. Well, he was in, in, in well, he was with Washington. He came to he made but a tour of the thirteen colonies in Virginia, but I don't think he. But he didn't come to Marblehead at that time. Yeah, he came to he visited all the colonies as a sort of a triumphal tour. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he brought to Marblehead was money. <coughs> That's one of the reasons that we used to. I read someplace that we don't do it anymore. Ring the bells on his birthday three times a day. Yeah, they just don't do that. He brought either. money to Marblehead because the widows, that you don't know what this town was like at the end of the revolution. It was a port, number one. The guy, they sent so many guys, there was nobody here except old men and women and kids. 
They were, bur they were burning everything for wood. They couldn't get out to cut wood. They burned all kinds of stuff. They were working awful. And he brought money to help. He being Washington? Yeah, or? Washington brought money to help the widows of, of Marblehead, mm -hmm. the Gordon's Regiment. Yeah. Because practically everybody was you know, connected to the regiment at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons he came. I always say he came to thank the boys of Marblehead. I'm sorry, what? I always say that he came to thank the boys of Marblehead that they were on his boat in the Delaware. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm refreshing all this that I've said for a hundred years, you know, <laughs> because I find a lot of things, it, it's changed. Sure. Yeah. But is that still, um, mm -hmm. is yeah. that still yeah. doable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah. I just want to correct myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else? How about the little stool in the third floor? Is it the green room, you want to call it? The, the little footstool that looks like it's made from a pair of trousers. I don't know that it's trousers. Oh, no, it's, it's a jacket. A jacket? The jacket. Yeah. But One of the things that, that, another thing in that bed chamber that you just mentioned about, that's the two paintings, the Reverend Mr. Long yeah. and his wife. She's my favorite lady in the whole house. I love her. Yeah. Okay. I always point her out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Such a the glasses. Of vanity to be she, painted with your glasses. Well, she, that was because she was a writer. Yes. And a published writer. And after her husband died, somewhere in the 1880s, she put out two treatises mm -hmm. on, on the tobacco, evils right? of tobacco. Yeah, I always tell people that because I just think she's great. And I think that's fun. Yes. And I love the, her collar. I love yes. that lace yeah. in her collar. That rocker in there belonged to Mr. Lawrence, you know. The rocking oh, chair. To the Reverend Lawrence? Yes. Also, one of the things that I point out, not upper hallway, and I forgot it, is the apotheosis. Oh, yeah, I always talk about Because that. taking Washington up to heaven on a shaft of light yes, with the Indian nation and Merc and Liberty mourning at his feet. Who those other people are that look like the Virgin Mary? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I don't get into that. But I pointed out the picture, the Liverpool Jet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wallpaper in that hallway, too, is original. And it is English, despite the fact that it has a Chinese, Chinese. motif. Yeah. It went to the floor at one time. But remember, we had little children. One wife had 13 little children. They kept pets up there. Mm -hmm. And um, there were two um, political clubs that met mm -hmm. on the third floor. One was a local Focos. I don't know the other one. The Whigs, right? Was it the Whigs? Or did the local focus become the Whigs? I'll have to go back and Whatever. Look. It's not, but just two political groups. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that there was a lot of activity. The paintings along that wall are Chinese. They frames yeah. are Chinese, etc. And while we didn't get into the China trade, where it's poor, that was sales. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because you see the Hongs, you see the Wampoa reaches the river. You see the Pearl River a whole bit. It's very interesting. They're they're kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. And we have several desks. More desks. <laughs> How about the stenciling on that floor up there? Anything? The stenciling? Apparently it was there originally. Yeah, because I know it's been far reproduced. Right, there's a little patch of yeah. the original that they took yeah. that pattern yeah. from. That's where they took it from. Lauren and I spend quite a a lot of time talking about what it was like when the Lees lived there. Who slept in what room? Why isn't there a fireplace here? Um, what was the hallway looking down that the family used? What did they have on the walls there? That kind of thing. We spent hours doing that with no answers, mm -hmm. but hours. Mm -hmm. It's fun speculating. Yeah, exactly. But frustrating. Because there's no answer. Right. As she pointed out so many times, the bank people, Sir Fry, Sir mm -hmm. Fry, did write something about mm -hmm. the building, but there's nothing about the league. The only thing we have is a copy of his inventory and Mrs. Right. Lee's will. And her, right, her inventory. The stuff in his inventory is mind boggling. 
because he owned a ton and a half of real estate. Ton and a half of real estate. And yards of, of carpeting. Mm -hmm. And that kind of thing. So, Japan cabinets. And, uh, I'd love to have seen that great room when he had it all done up to right. beat the yeah. band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could have a copy of that inventory where yeah. it can be seen? It's in, um, oh, be seen by the public? Yeah. yeah. They can read it. Yeah, um, the transcription is easy, obviously. Um, and it is in the green binders, those big mungo green binders that are in the guy's kitchen. But yeah, I mean, I can print it. Oh. It's kind of all over I didn't the place. Know the they problem, were in there. I'd like to see it myself. Yeah, the problem is, is that the, that green binder has a lot of stuff. Now, granted, some of it's a little outdated, but um, the problem is, is that his his inventory is not room by room, and no, that's uh, the problem. Uh, if it was room by room, we'd be set. Mm. Yeah. But because it's not, it, you just have to sort of figure you don't it out. It's yeah. a bunch of the stuff just thrown in together and yeah. mixed up and that type of thing. But her, Mrs. Lee's from 1791 is room by room, but she's only living in a few rooms at that yeah. point and how that changed, yeah. you know, in the many years since his death. And we know that she vacated the house? We don't know that how, yeah. how much or how long she vacated to Newbury. Was it certain points in time and then she came back? But there's enough that she could be living in this house in okay. 1791. Yeah, because yeah, I thought that she was like not too long after yeah. Jeremiah died. I don't know what was that. Much. I've yeah. never seen seven anything years. that comes from the house. Seven years? That's what I was told. Oh, well, seven the years is the time the that they lived, lived together. Yeah, right, right. Because he dies seven years after right. they right. move in in 1768. But I mean, I know like she was asked to come but back it, for George Washington's luncheon and well, all that. Well, that's the thing. So she's there for George Washington's luncheon. She's there for um, Lafayette. The first That's why time. I think we have the wrong dates on something in my head. But anyway, so, you know, she, I, she hung in here for, as long as she could. Mm -hmm. But Was the house, do you think, pretty bare bones at that point? A lot of the contents sold off for debts? Well, I would think that she had to sell stuff. Yeah, or give it away. Stay here. She could have had to also give things to yeah. the family so that they weren't taken by the creditors. Because oh, don't forget, wow. by the time they finally get Lee's estate, done. He's insolvent. He owes like, yeah. well he owes a ton of money but he can only pay about 70 cents to the dollar based on his worldly goods. Yeah. And of course he's been dead forever by then. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I found interesting was, is it in Mrs. Lee's will about the portraits? Excuse me. Um, because she had yes. the portraits. She yeah. kept the copley portraits. Yes, I think you're oh, right. it's in her yeah. will. Mm -hmm. So that they didn't go in his inventory. Mm -hmm. She had. Don't forget, she, and you're right, she's taken advantage of her third of the estate oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, um, she's smart enough to keep them. Yeah, yeah they're, in her, they're in her will. Not to marry, though. Was it to marry? I don't remember. I'd have to go back. I don't know who, who finally got them. Yeah. How did they end up in Connecticut then? Hmm? How did they end up in Connecticut, the portraits? In Canada? Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, at the end. That was thanks. That was thanks to Mrs. Cronenshield. Well, not really thanks to Mrs. Cronenshield. We were offered. She was offered the originals. Wow. By a, by Lee descendants. Whomever, yeah. yeah. Okay. We were offered that she was offered the originals, okay. and she yeah. said no, Why? because the house is not climate controlled and oh. it's not fireproof. Oh. And they weren't all that expensive at that time. Nowadays, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Boy. This, I think it was in the 40s. They were, yeah. had been in the yeah. MFA yeah. for a while. So, I think 45, I think. Yeah. so she refused them. <clears throat> and they went down to the wars with Athenaeum. And then all of a sudden, we got the copies. And that was a little bit of a what the hell do we do with these yeah, things? But you, know? you can see in one of those yeah. two bigger yeah, pictures what they, they tried. The they were in the parlor. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Was Jeremiah's portrait in there as yeah. well? Oh, yeah. It was. They were flanking the fireplace in the uh -huh. great room. And the funny part of it is Mrs. Chamberlain, Mrs. Samuel Chamberlain, was a member of the board. And she told me the story about how, what a fight she had with the historical society to get those things out of that room and up on the landing. They, they didn't want to do it. But Mrs. Crown and Shield's brother persuaded her 
by saying, get them up there, and it's the last thing you do, Biscuit. And so Biscuit got them up there. So. And is that where they think they originally hung? Mm -hmm. Upstairs, they think that's where they originally hung, yes. it's off well, the landing? As far as we know, yeah. As far as we know, they hung on, the, on that landing when he it ordered them. It seems the, the perfect spot. Where I can't else? imagine putting them anywhere else. But. It, it's weird, because where else would they fit? Yeah. Hmm. And she, well, the only thing, and don't forget, they they were commissioned in '69, so they mm -hmm. were commissioned after the house was built. So yeah. it makes sense that they had a mm -hmm. place in mind mm -hmm. in the house. Do we know if the uh, painter came to them, or did they go to him, Copland, Singleton, Copland? I don't know that we know for sure, but he was. <coughs> my understanding is that, you know. A lot of the tropes that are in the, the metaphors and the tropes that he used in other paintings he used in these too. So it was his, he was copying English painters, that whole yeah. desk. Like they never had that table. Mm -hmm. That's, That's they, a prop from his studio. Prop, basically, yeah. or, in his, or in his experience. Yeah. It's kind of fun. If you look at portraits, you'll find the same dress on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and I'll tell you why, what, what's fun about it. I was commissioned not some time ago to do a drawing of a house up on West Shore Drive for the fat guy. And I said, okay, no problem. Yeah, now what do, what do you want me to move? <laughs> I said, move? This is the outer exterior of the house. I said, move? He said, well, yes, you want me to move the furniture? I said, honey, if I don't want to put it in, I don't paint it. <laughs> I can move trees. <laughs> I can sure. do all kinds of stuff, all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. So, Painters can do that. They can paint the same damn thing on 15 people. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Biscuit? Hmm? Who is Biscuit? You said Biscuit. Nurses and Chamberlain. Sir Nick Payne. Who's Biscuit? You're kidding. <laughs> I named my favorite cat Biscuit. <laughs> oh my God. What, what's her name? Chamberlain? Nurses and Chamberlain. Mrs. Samuel Chamberlain was called Biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And who were the Yoko Okos? What? The, what was the uh, Loco Focos. Loco, Loco <laughs> some what? sort of political group. Yes, yeah, it's Focos. Some, uh, Focos? Was it Loco, L, capital L O, capital C O, capital F O. Yeah. Loco Focos. Loco Focos. Yeah. Fun. I don't know what they, with some kind of a political men's group, obviously. No, not I can't find anything about yeah. them. Let me see, was there anything I left there? Because th this is the kind of thing, and when you go through again, if you've got somebody with you who's, because I did emphasis yesterday. Now I, I can do emphasis again today because that is something to point out. What is that? Um, in the family parlor on the first floor, there are pilasters flanking the mm -hmm. fireplace. Oh, that's and, what we used to think. Oh, yeah, that. that's it. If you look at when you're in the room. And look up directly at them, the things start and they, this is an exaggeration, but it bulges out and then goes back in again. Now, why would you bother? But when it's this building, that building, he bothered. <laughs> he wanted it. And he got it. In the room above, his bedchamber, there are panelings to stop food at the bottom, but the food and panel, pilaster above it, still has that little bit of a bulge. And what did you call it? Antasis. E N T A S I S. Yeah. That was pointed out to me by some guy from the Graduate School of Design at Harvard. Is that heard. an architectural term? Antasis? Yeah. 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 yeah, classical archaeology. Okay. Yeah. I would, and back in the day when we couldn't go into the rooms, remember those days? Yeah. When we couldn't go in, you wouldn't see them. But now that we can walk into the room, about whoa. And you think, why would he bother to do it? If you, if you made it straight, they don't look right. They don't look right when they're straight. Yeah. No, they don't look right. It's to correct. Um, it, it, it makes them appear straight. Proper. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It makes them appear a little bit as though they're carrying a load. Yeah. They have a slight, uh, a, yeah. a slight bulge to them. But um, if you if you make them straight, they just don't look right. Yeah. And the Greeks did that. Yeah. You know, they did all these slight optical refinements to improve mm -hmm. the appearance of it. Yeah. And you know, these things were studied by yeah. the people who were studying the antiquities, mm -hmm. and they and they I knew faithfully copied these things because they the other thing, excuse me, the other thing in that room I mentioned it yesterday. The tiles are rather interesting. 
and I think they should Around be pointed it. out. Also, the tiles in Mrs. Lee's bedchamber mm -hmm. are marvelous, and the andirons are bell metal, B-E-L-L. -L. Mrs. Lee's. If you look, I pointed out because there's a warming pan in there that's brass and it's yellow, but you look at the andirons and they're pink. And it brings out the color in that, those tiles beautifully. The other thing, of course, that fascinates me is the, little, the walls that come down the middle, the end in the middle of the window. Mm. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And what is bell metal? Bell metal is copper and brass, oh. making bells. Yeah, I yeah. never heard that term. Yeah. Right? What about the bathtub? You said they, they did use bathtubs by the fireplace? But they would have had it in the kitchen? Likely, yeah. And they, so didn't, they, they didn't wouldn't do have a carry of, water up three flights. Yeah. Right, but don't forget they're also not doing a ton of full immersion bathing, like we do almost daily pretty yeah. much. But they would, the wash basins are more for exposed parts. That's why their linens were changed often that were actually touching the body. Yeah. That was sort of, the, it's not correct to say they never bathed. They just didn't immersion bathe like we do. But they sponged off. They cleaned off mm -hmm. and then they changed their linens frequently, yeah, especially the Lees being so wealthy. Sure. They certainly changed their right. linens and laundered them. Most people did laundry every week. Were the linens like undergarments? Or a yes. Base, a base garment? Yeah, what's touching your mm -hmm. skin, basically. Yeah, what's between your skin and the outer garments. So they did actually did use a tub in some... When they did full immersion bathe, they yeah. had something, yeah. likely. Maybe once a week. Probably a lot of these no, the uh, laundry was once a week. They probably, they may have, uh, in the 19th century, they estimate they may have bathed more like once or twice. Well, didn't they actually uh, every feel that weeks. bathing was bad for you, that it was unhealthy? That's kind of, that's, it kind of comes and goes, the idea of hygiene. That's that's older, older. idea that by our period in America, we're not, they're not, they don't, they don't understand germ theory, certainly, but they don't, yeah, yeah. it's not that. So One of the things about bathing, that lasted a long time. That, but my, my family used to call it a kitty bath. You know, <laughs> um, my father was born in Newfoundland, and he moved to Canada as a young boy to apprentice to a carpenter. Oh, how I wish I had been able to talk to him now. And he started, the first thing his project was to make a window. <laughs> but he lived in a boarding house. That's exactly how we bathed. They had wash stands. There's one in the Lee Mansion upstairs mm -hmm. on the second floor, third floor, with a pitcher and a bowl, mm -hmm. and it was a kitty bath. You put a little water in, you, that was it. My mother called them a sponge bath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you just don't stand downwind. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as if the Lees were doing a lot of heavy lifting either. Yeah, and right. Their servants. Their however. servants certainly. Well, they, they, that's true. And I was interested in reading, as I, fabric and stuff fascinates me. The dresses on the women in a certain period were tight on the shoulder. So if they went to pick anything up, they couldn't. So they were open under the arms. Mm -hmm. you could, and, then, so, and they didn't shave under their arms. So you'd have a lovely look at an underarm beard. <laughs> So that's kind of fun. I mean, it's just, they get, you get used to smells. Like when I worked at Sturbridge, you get used to the smell yeah. of cow manure. You don't yeah. even notice it. Yeah. So it's just a different, like there are whole books about smells in colonial period, sounds in colonial period. I'd almost rather have the B.O. than some of these teenage kids who spray themselves with cologne. <laughs> they pass you and wham! Yeah. What the? Yeah. You, because sense. what happens with perfume, my stepdaughter used to do this. She'd wear the same smell, and it would, she'd you get used to it, so she'd put more on. Pretty soon, I would walk around the house on the smell when she was moving. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, because I get physically ill from the artificial, yes. yeah. artificial oh, yeah. chemicals. Yeah, smells. when you're teaching, it you must be one of the deodorant. Like some of these guys, you can smell them a mile away as soon as it gets warm. Yeah. It's not the air, it's the smell yeah. of the artificial fragrance. Yeah. Which they now think contributes to cancer. Jane Dylander yes. contributes to cancer. was related to a member of the board way back when. Huh. And she came to the house one time and did a speech 
for the an annual meeting. And I can remember her standing on the landing, looking at Jeremiah and saying, the, when does this painting done? And I said, about, it was commissioned in 1769. I don't know exactly when it was done, but she said, hmm, that outfit he's got on is way, way earlier than that. It's a little old-fashioned. It's old-fashioned old what it he's got on. So she said, oh, isn't that interesting? I said, well, you don't suppose it was his wedding suit? You know how guys used to come home from the army and they get into their army uniform? I can still get into oh, it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so I wonder if Jeremiah, is the, when it was the original that they had at the um, Nathaniel Gould show. Oh, at the PBS. Oh. Yeah, it's beautiful. The gold lace was, it sang, it was so beautiful. And of course, that damask uh, curtain on the corner. The man could paint. Well, we're fortunate to have the, the miniature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, fortunate. The colors in that is so much more vibrant. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Betty, were the paintings on the stairway or in the Great Hall when you and I were first here? Yeah, they were always on the landing. They were. Yeah. I yeah, I never did see them except in photographs so downstairs. And Mrs. Cr Mrs. Biscuit. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Biscuit. Don't. I never called her Biscuit, but everybody else did. She was Mrs. Chamberlain. <laughs> but she was wonderful because she went through the house. She had connections, a lot of connections. And so she'd go through the house and she'd say, that painting is a such and such, but you can't say it because it doesn't take it out of the frame and it wasn't da -da -da -da, but they say that's a so and so. And there are a couple of them upstairs that, that she said were, I can't think of the night, but the, in the Gables, there's a painting of Nathaniel um, Hawthorne, mm -hmm. and it's done by this artist, and we've got two, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according to Mrs. Carnegie Shield. Mrs. Really? Uh, Chamberlain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was great. She had all kinds of connections. She and Mr. Chamberlain were. Mm -hmm. I don't know who big. that would be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, anything else? Yeah, the, yeah. Well, while you're talking about the paintings, the one of, uh, what is it, Robert Hooper, the one with no teeth? Yeah. That's, is, is that really by uh, Gilbert Stewart? I mean, that's what it says on the tag. I don't tag, think it's but a it Gilbert kinda, Stewart. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I would, I I would view that with no, a great deal no, of suspicion. No, it's, it's too, it's no. Yeah, it's no good. It's attributed to Gilbert Stewart, yeah. not attributed, yeah. but it says by Gilbert yeah, Stewart. I don't know where that came from. Sure. <laughs> Maybe it was by Stewart. And I made a gardener. Mimi has one more question. What? Hmm? Mimi. When I have um, a, a tour, people often say, where did you get all these portraits? Mm -hmm. And I don't really have an answer. Donated. That's what Everything I, that's what I say. Donated. Or people, Mrs. Crown and Shield bought it and donated yeah. it. Yeah. But the ones that by, Sam, by William Bartol up on the third floor. Given to um, us. Yeah. Just all given by yeah. the by yeah. the, the family. family. The family. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe they're sick and tired of looking right. at Uncle Charlie and they yeah. you know, get them. Because we were, as I said yesterday, sort of like the Salvation Army. You want to get rid of something? Give it to the historical. Yeah. Um, in a way, I'm very happy. Did you see today's reporter? That Charlie Loray, who has collected a lot of fire stuff, oh. gave it to the um, to town of Marblehead. It's going to be up in Abbott Hall. But, Firefighting things, mm -hmm. firefighting equipment. Yeah, yeah, they had helmets and uh -huh. stuff. Because he was a collector from the get go, uh -huh. and um, <clears throat> Charlie was a great guy. And he came to a recent board of selectmen's meeting and presented them with all kinds of stuff. Nice. Well, it's not going to be here for us stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm very ha glad that the historical commission is getting it. So that's really where it belongs, mm -hmm. because there's something down. I'm going to pontificate. Hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> How strange. Um, Dr. Ayerson was a oh, no. physician in my head when I was going up. <laughs> I'll, I'll be under the table. Yeah, you go, you go out there. You can leave now. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> and there was a wet bench in his waiting room by a bench. It's like a fancy dance settee with a high back and it's ugliest thing. <laughs> Even if it were gorgeous, it's the wrong period for anything in this house. We've got it. 
Was that the one on the third floor with the no. No. green? We don't even know where it is. It's not on display. display. It's not on display. It will be on display. It's not on view. Was it Victorian? Yes. Late. Well, it's on the counting room. Late. Late. It, it's a damnedest looking Victorian. thing. But the trouble is, when you so you can't really say, no, we don't want that. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to do. Yeah. Uh, was it offered to the Historical Commission and they didn't want it? Yeah. yeah, see, so we wound up with it. There used to be a sofa, a empire horse hair thing in the cellar. Is it still there? <laughs> and of course, the veneer went boom, years ago on the floor yeah. in the dampness. Mm -hmm. How would you like to have? the people who gave it to you come and want to see it. That's my nightmare oh in general. My God. <laughs> I need to see oh, this. You should, if oh, if you, you want to thought Fred Astaire and Mother can dance, oh, could I dance <laughs> and lie at the same time. <laughs> well, the, all those things with the tags fell off. Mm -hmm. I don't know which foot right. warmer it is. Because it just says foot warmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, it really is. So the other thing that's difficult is to deaccession. In other words, you've got 47,000 sea chests. Now back in the day, I don't think we're getting much of anything now, are we? Except mm. Dr. Ireson's settee. Not the least. But no. to deaccession, people, are, oh, that came from the Historical Society collection. Well, I'm not going to give them anything if they're going right. to get, sell it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody who owned those sea chests was still with us. No. You know, the, the families would say, that was my uncle. You know, I don't think no. they know. But no. Most of them came in in 1900. And right now, if you got rid of them, you, you know what they'd be good for? Firewood. Nobody wants them. And it's a shame. It'll all go to your house. <laughs> it's a shame. You don't want to see that one. Make a coffee table. Well, thank you all so much. I'll let you know when we schedule the the tour through the mansion. And, oh, and 1824, Lafayette's first building. No, second. I said 1784. 1784 was Lafayette. 89 was Washington. 89 was Washington, and the commission says they came together. That's not. I don't think that's true. No, they did not come together. So I think that's where the False, 89 comes in. So 1784, okay. he came. Then he came later and stayed on the ship, yeah. never got off, and then 18, 24. And 24 is when he took the nap. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's when it was the bank family, it was the parents' bedroom, <laughs> and now what we call the housekeeper's room. And he was old and tired. <laughs> and he was old and tired, exactly. And he hadn't slept since 1780. Exactly. <laughs> so he was really so sleepy. <laughs> Can I, right. can I ask you just a general Marblehead thing that I've always wondered about? The word whip in Marblehead. Mm -hmm. you're tell me. Can you tell me about it? I can tell you about it. I don't know what it means. Oh, you I don't. don't know where it originated. I wonder, because it's sort of a Marblehead thing. Yeah. Some people say they know what it means, but it's too many it counts on it. I thought it was like, sort of like, like people would say whip it, like they meant damn it. Like you weren't like a little kid would say it in front of his I, I really or. don't know. I yeah. Ray Orn maintained that he knew what it meant and where it came from, and but he never would tell me. And <laughs> the only thing that I love about it is if you, my high school biology teacher was in World War One, in London Piccadilly Circus, and he, everything was a sea of khaki, and he saw somebody way over there that he thought he recognized. So he let out a yell, whip! Everybody else didn't pay any attention. What the hell is that guy? The fellow, was, he was ahead of him. Uh-huh. He was ahead of him. They had a lovely libation or two. And enjoyed <laughs> talking to each and other. true header style. <laughs> I wondered if it stood for something, you know, the W-H-I-P, if it was, you know, an acronym. An acronym. I don't know. I don't know. I've never been able to pin it down to anything. Okay. And I really don't give a damn. Yeah, it's just a, one of those quirky little... I have something for you, just, I'm just curious. I just ran into a news article that three or four British children were brought here during the war and yes. stayed for the duration to avoid, well, the, to bombing avoid the bombing and such yes. going on in England. Yes. Oh, okay. Because when that Theodore Smith was in, sworn into the Navy in mm -hmm. the room where he was born, Miles, yeah. his brother 
Greg. Greg and his wife had a little boy from London. That's right. We mentioned that yesterday. That's what made me think of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. Mm. That's a long way for them to go. Yeah, well, they were, the, the people were scared to death yeah. and the kids were going to yeah. be sure. lost in the war, so they sent them away. I wish we could find evidence that there was a victory garden in the mansion garden. We could do some cool programming with that. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was a victory garden? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. The garden club does, yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? I, I don't think so. No? Anyway. From what war would that have been? Two. World War II. Gardens, yeah. Yeah. Right? So wouldn't the Marblehead yeah, Garden Club have sense. done one in the Lee sense. Mansion Garden? It would be yes. huge. Yeah. Yeah. They're too busy doing their own, maybe. Oh well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betty.